This is a previously recorded episode of the IT and the D Show. Episode 108 of the IT and the D Show is brought to you by Hired.com. It is uh, basically they took a job board and they built it backwards with the users in mind. If you are a coder, techie, geek, you definitely need to check them out. Um, basically, you have the ability to accept or reject offers before anyone contacts you, so you will not get recruiters calling you all day. Typical coders get about five interview requests a week. They work with over 2,500 different companies from startups to large public universities. Uh, it's totally free for users, and the best part, if you get a job through them, they'll give you $2,000. Isn't that great? You get a job and two grand. But if you use our special link, Hired.com slash IT in the D to sign up, they'll double it. That's right. You'll get four grand to get a job through Hired.com. But if you're not looking for a job and know someone is, refer them, and you can get a bonus of up to $1,300. So check out Hired.com slash IT in the D and uh, find somebody a job. You won't find that salesy stuff here. You'll find networking mixed with beer. You can't stop it. Just to say hi, we'll kick you out if you're that guy. We are IT in the deep. Ooh, this is IT in the deep. The following program is intended for mature audiences. This is Max Ma- Ma- Hedrum. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. <gasps> This is the IT in the D Show. This show is broadcasting live from Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming and is part of the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hey, this is John Schneider from Nip Tuck Smallville, the haves and the have nots. So, oh, Dr. Quinn, hot in Cleveland, Secret Lives of the American Teenager, and just about everything you can possibly imagine. And oh, yeah, the Dukes of Hazard. You're listening to Bob and Dave. It's the IT in the D show. Just where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! I used to hang out at the Mugumbo Bar. It was a rough place with the seediest dive on the wharf. Populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come. Shut up. (laughs) Dig you IT geeks. This is Dre DeMatteo from Sons of Anarchy. You are listening to IT in the D. Fear me. So what happens when you tap the angry beaver in the bunghole? <laughs> exactly. Come on. Christ. <laughs> what the hell with this? I'm calling a break. We'll come back to the D show. Hi, this is Ralph Macho, and you're listening to IT in the D show. Wax on. You know what. Why would, like, Buick put their cars next to, like, the Bentleys? Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT in the D Show. No mercy. I may have to wipe the geek off. Hi, this is Martin Cove, uh, John Kreese from the Karate Kid movie. And you're listening to IT in the D. Yes, Sensei! You're not very informative, but why are you entertaining? Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT in the D. All you nerds out there. Nerds! 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 What is a nerd? I'm a geek, not a nerd. This is Scott Stein of Big Pump Pump. IT and the D Show is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. You're yeah, in your underwear? I'm in my underwear. Here, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I <laughs> definitely want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. I was banging oh, on the yeah. wang. Skeptical, Dave is skeptical. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to. Well, especially with the back doors open. It's just too big. <laughs> it's way too big. We just lost our clean tag on iTunes. <laughs> This is Robert Hayes, Ted Stryker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at the Magumbo Bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat steak. Turn your microphone off. Just get out. (laughs) Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And you're listening to the IT and the D show. Tough guy. Ho! So, 
What would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do, the question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Sir, had you better buckle up? Ah, fuck all this! Ludicrous speed! Go! Welcome to a very special edition, Labor Day 2015. This is episode 108 of the IT in the D Show. We are broadcasting live remote at the Blackfin Ameripub here in Royal Oak, Michigan. During. Yeah, the large amount of crowd noise that you're hearing in the background actually isn't a party in the studio for once. We're not completely overbooked with guests. We're, we're, just, we're live at the Blackfin, back room hanging out, you know, our, our usual home base activity. Absolutely. This is uh, the Labor Day weekend is always the home of uh, arts, beats, and eats, or as we like to call it, farts, beats, and eats. Uh, right. We are. I'm upset. Salt and Peppa just hit the stage, and we are missing it to uh, to broadcast here live. But uh, yeah. fun, fun times indeed. You can find us online um, as always. Uh, ItInTheD.com. You know, follow us on Facebook, like us on Twitter. This is Bob the Sales Guy, always here with uh, Dave the Geek. Uh, Billy from Social Coop is sitting in for Nuri the AST, who is in the Philippines right now. Billy, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, anytime. Hi, Mom. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, we are uh, being part of Podcast Detroit. We just launched a new show today. And I am uh, proud to say Theo, the gridiron from uh, the Detroit Lions uh, games, is uh, yeah. doing a show with us. Yeah, and it went really, really well. I no, mean, I, we got so many comments from people that were like, Oh, my God. I mean, the, the guy had a great voice, knew his stuff. Obviously, he knows his stuff. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's gone really well. And then Motown Mojo Live followed up with a little live music yeah. uh, with a little twang here that you don't of, often hear here at the Black Fin. They got applause at the end of their yeah. podcast. We never yeah, get so, I mean, it's, it went really well. So, speaking of football, this, uh, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Uh, Dave talked about it last week, and that was real cute while I was in Vegas. You, you, you're talking about fantasy football. But, um, hey, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I said it before. I'll say it again. Fantasy football is Dungeons and Dragons for guys who used to beat up people for playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> it's a little close to home, but I feel... <laughs> but I'm, I'm completely digging FanDuel. You want to know why? Because you know, I've been playing in the same fantasy football league for 14 years, and it never fails. You get the number one draft pick. You get Marshawn Lynch. Then he blows out his ACL then you hate it. Um, with FanDuel, it's a little bit different. It actually goes week to week. It's the uh, it's basically ADD, uh, lovers rejoice, fan, fantasy football. So basically what you do is um, you have a salary cap. You pick your players. Um, you can you can play for free or you can bet, uh, bet money on it either way. They are going to be paying out almost $75 million a week. It's that's insane to me. It, it's it's nuts. It's over like two billion dollars. I heard over the course of the year. Um, literally, you get a salary cap, pick your players. Um, you win this week, you lose next week. It, it really it's it's as simple as that. Every week's a new week. Um, but if you go over to FanDuel.com, use your use our coupon code coupon code I T D three letters I T D. They will match um, for New Year's those only. They'll match up to two hundred bucks. So they will uh, give you dollar for dollar up to two hundred bucks. So check out check them out. FanDuel.com. Sign up today. Use coupon code ITD. And uh, I'm having fun with it. It's I'm actually enjoying it. You know, we had our free the free league that I set up to test things out filled out filled up like nobody's business in like an hour. I couldn't even sign up for it. So I had no idea that was going to happen. Because I was in Vegas, baby. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So uh, can we talk about that real quick? Of now course. I, I, st- I think I still feel like I got hit by a truck. Vegas is like... Vegas days are like dog years in, in human being life. I literally feel like I was there for three months. Um, but yeah, Cisco had some some big news. We're sitting there in the uh, MGM uh, arena, out walks Tim Cook, and everyone. Yeah, was like, you guys are uh, now good buddies with Apple, apparently. Well, apparently. So then, you know, it was kind of like last year when Hillary Clinton came out. Half the crowd cheered, half the crowd groaned, <laughs> and it's like uh, you just heard like the. As at once, half the crowd with the Android users said, oh, shit. <laughs> so we're going to have to get... So, of course, they make the announcement we're all getting uh, Apple Watches. And um, they're going to you know, basically make all of our phones talk to iPhones. So we're, um, they're pretty much going to make... So I look, I'm sitting next to my boss. I'm like, i got to get rid of my Samsung, don't I? He's like, yes, so sir. It's going to be iCisco now? It's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be... What, what, yeah, iCatalyst switches. Yeah, the whole company is going to be... But... I just want to walk you through. Like some people don't think like the what I was amazed with is twenty thousand of us there, right? The logistics to put something like this on to feed us and to bus us around—it's obscene. There was seven hundred and eighty charter buses to take us from hotel or from from casino to casino. Every casino, you know, we couldn't stay at one place. We're at like six different places, and 
we all had, we were all, I found out, I sat next to an SC, this is what you're going to love. Well, we go nuts trying to put together an event with a thousand people at it. Oh, the army of, God, I don't, the army of short women pointing where you can and cannot sit is astounding. I mean, hundreds. It's like, how do you even apply for this gig? Like, how do they even, like, I know they're a, use event management companies, but it's in, like, you, no, no, you can't sit, I, I feel like it was the, the uh, South, uh, Family guy is like, yeah. no, no, can't sit here. No, like, no, 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 Stan. <laughs> what what no. is the job title for? They just pointed. Right. They didn't the talk to you. Pointer, just, short pointer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, I want to sit in this section. Like, no, I'm, no. I'm sure it's event coordinator or event executive or something. Director of media and must events. be shorter yeah. than five feet with long <laughs> pointy. <laughs> they finger. were all five foot tall. D- d- director of directional location finding. So what I, I, I'm talking with an SE at one of the bars afterwards, and he's telling me that you know we're all RFID. So I said, you know, because I was asking him, because everywhere you'd walk, there was sensors uh, in the hallway. And I go, well, what's up with that? And he goes, they know where you are. They know how long you've been in each session. They know when you left early. Uh-huh. They know who's where and, and how long. And he goes, and there's a list. You don't want to be in the top, on the bottom ten. I'm just telling you that right now. And I'm like, anyone? See, here's the thing. They, they fly you out to Vegas. They put you up. Like, and people, like, abuse it, right? And they don't go to, like, all you got to do is sit through a session. We're not asked to do anything. There's no tests. And people just completely abuse it. But just, I was shocked. Just blow at, sessions off. Don't even show up. Yeah, no. Were and there the, people who had no idea that you guys were chipped? There was people that, they, someone was talking, like, oh, they track us. We have to download an app for our schedule and surveys, and it was a little bit interactive. Like, oh, they track us with the app. So we know we're being tracked. Someone knows, but they just didn't know how. Right? And they definitely didn't know we were on a list. Right, which changes everything. So I don't know if they're trying to put the fear of God. If there is no list, if they just spread that rumor with the SE community, right? Um, but yeah, we were laughing because Tim Cook comes out, and then uh, we do something with St. Jude. So um, what's his name? Keith Urban comes out, right? And everyone was talking about how great it was. I'm like, well, I hate Apple. I hate country music. I hate Apple. I hate country music. And it's like best week yeah, ever. It was an amazing day. But like literally, the the, the what the. How they put these things on is just absolutely astounding. I heard over $100 million like, just for a sales kickoff. That's like, crazy. I, it's I, literally I, mind-blown. Like, and there's someone with gray hair now. A, 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 and lost and it. And they're all yeah. five feet tall. <laughs> with, with long, pointy Pointing. fingers. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and, and they fed us. Like, you know, there's... You imagine sitting in Cobo Hall, like, during International Auto Show, and all it is is round tables with ten people eating. And there's like you walk past buffet buffet and you can't eat at this one you got to eat at that you can't eat at that one you got to you got to eat at the farthest back one possible. Why? We were, because no no can't eat here. <laughs> was, yeah, get, no 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 food here. <laughs> right? No no. But we, we, the guys that wore Fitbits were counting. They they were averaging between sixteen thousand and twenty thousand um, steps a day, which Nuts. equated to like eight to ten miles. Like literally, they tell you they they text you in the morning going. Walk out of your hotel room 45 minutes before first session. Like that's how long it's going to take you to, to walk and shuttle over there. Like, literally nuts. But no, cool technology. I, I love seeing, like, what's next. Um, like, they, the whole... Uh, the, they're trying to redo telephones, which I kind of think is cool because they haven't changed since IP yeah. phones came out. They're basically doing them like Meraki did to cloud... Um, okay. For, for cloud manager. So now your phone will be someone else's phone? Exactly. That, that I got like <laughs> somebody had a tweet board up at the collab session, so I texted the sticker. There is no cloud; it's just somebody else's computer. Apparently, that caught wind and like got like twelve favorites or something. Nothing. <laughs> none of my tweets ever get anything. You're right. <laughs> but no, it's fun time. I'm so glad that to be makes home. you a social media guru now. I'm a guru or a ninja. Yeah, no, I didn't trend though. I think this. Yeah. So, these? so I'm just curious. You know, while while Tim Cook was out there giving doing his little song and dance, did anybody ask him? You know about the two hundred and twenty-five thousand plus Apple accounts that have been breached. I, I, I don't think they did. No, <laughs> that would have been a great question. Cause, so Tim, because apples don't get viruses. No, but 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 they did, and and there's a Trojan floating around that apparently compromised over two, like about a quarter of a million now Apple accounts off of iPhones. Um, yeah, it's not pretty because it's. It's not. It's sending little ripples through the community because they thought they were immune. So ripples, Trojan. Ripple so what for you're her saying pleasure. Is, yeah, is, is, yeah, Apple is. Yeah. Nice. So, so I mean, they're compromised. So what happened to them? I didn't. I didn't get too deep in that article. Oh, so all the you know, basically all your credentials and everything else that you had stored on your phone and everything you've typed into it because it installed a keylogger. So you know all your websites that you've been going to and all of your you know your your banking app and all that stuff. Oh yeah. 
Oh, oh yeah, just so, an average day on the internet. Yeah, exactly. All your data are belong to us. Yeah. So they're not just idiots like me and leave your ATM in the machine an hour ago. I still can't believe you did that. Oh, an idiot. <laughs> like, it's not bad enough that you got 10 of ten new cards last year. Now you're just leaving them in random locations. Yeah, I know. I had no problems with it up until then either. So, I mean, wait, so what do they have to get, like, re, re what do they have to do? Redo all their bank info or just hope something doesn't happen? Oh, it's one of those things where somebody has, you know, somebody has whatever data you're running on your phone. Yeah, you should probably go reset all of your passwords. You should go ahead and do, you know, change your password everywhere. Because, I mean, and that's in this, you know, we were kind of talking about the whole Ashley Madison thing last week. You know, and it's people don't understand that it's not just like it's not the Ashley Madison hack in a vacuum that's the issue. It's you know, you now you've got that ten gig data file floating around out there, along with the one from Target from last year, along with you know, the one from OPM and that's someone out there. can tie that all together. Right. And so it's hey, there's these points of commonality between these, you know, these different databases that are out there now. So odds are good that if you're using the same user ID at these at you know, two out of three of those locations Let's go ahead and just start hammering on banks until we figure out where you're using the same user ID and password. Mm. You know, because I mean, there's only you know, X, you know, yes, you might be at a credit union and yes, you might be at a one-off site, but yeah, they're going to go try Bank of America, Chase, Capital One, all the biggies, you know, to see if they can get in and see if they can find you. But you know, the one thing we didn't talk about is you know, talking about events with you know a thousand people at, and we've got our pink slip party coming up next Thursday, dude. Oh my god, it's, it's coming up so quick here. That's come up so quick. Yeah, so we are going to be over at the Majestic Theater. Uh, on the 17th, that's next Thursday. We'll be there from 5 o'clock on until whenever. Uh, question mark. It's always yeah, a sign of a good it's party. It's always a question mark. It's but a I mean, very it's, big question mark. Well, yeah, I mean, it, and it's the usual fun and excitement. You know, we're expecting 125 to 150 recruiters. We'll have, you know, probably upwards of 1,000 total people there. We've got a couple of little surprises up our sleeve to have some fun with, and it's, it's going to be a good night. DJ Nuri in the house. Of course. But here, I, I guess the best part about it, and I, you know, it's going to sound like a cheap read, but everyone in the room's in IT. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you know MLM, no fruit basket no, salesmen, no we've spent 14 years kicking them out. Yep. yep and they finally got the hint. We haven't seen one in a, in a while. Of course, we're probably jinxing ourselves no, I know. saying that. I can't wait, though. I want, I want one to sh- like primary. I do. I need, a, I need a good event session at one of our <laughs> events again. But, you know, basically it's a simple format. It's, it's just like kind of hanging out at your local bar, except the people with big lanyards are hiring people. And you need to talk to them. Yep. And they want to talk to you because if they hire you, they get paid. Right. Um, yeah, it's, is, it's not a real complicated concept. I was blown away by that Hired.com thing. It's like, you get four grand for getting a job? It's like, yeah. Jeez. Are you kidding me? I might go take a look. And take we a get, now, does that count for side gigs? Like, can I multitask and get a job there and still keep my job? How long do you have to keep the job for? I don't know. Right. I don't know. I'm interested, though, in finding out. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's some caveat there I mean, somewhere. Not yeah. that I'm trying to game the system. Yeah, I, I got my 19th job through Hired.com this year. <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking, you know, we haven't done it in a while. Who's having a bad week? You know, who's having a bad week? The guy that, the guy that bought and sold or built and sold Minecraft. Oh, he's not having a bad week. He's no, having he's a whiny a, ass week. What's his name? Marcus Person. Yes, and he and sold he sold off Minecraft for a billion dollars. Two point five. Uh, oh, that's it. And now so, he's complaining that he's sad. He's lonely. And he's lonely. And because having that much money has just changed the whole interaction with his friends, and now he basically sits alone in his big giant mansion, waiting for his friends to get off work. So that he can have somebody to play with. His tweets and two point five woe, billion woe dollars does not buy happiness. Apparently what not. He's saying. he's saying like, I'm sad. I'm in a Biza <laughs> on my sixty foot yacht and I'm lonely. Wah, wah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm sure people would, wouldn't be happy. You know, and he's the guy that snuck and bought Jay Z and Beyonce's house underneath them. Right. You know that story, yeah, right? Yeah, that dude. Right. He's like so. Like obviously, he's not. A, you know, he's middle finger prone. Right. He doesn't. But I'm sad. It's like, oh, you know, for recreating Doom, which is without the without the rifle. That's really all he did. You know, which and you know, again, he's sad. I think every parent in America is sad because their damn kids won't put the put the thing down. They won't stop playing Minecraft. I have no idea what the uh, what it is. You know, if it's like the um, which Halloween was it? Eight more days till Halloween, and all the kids got all like you know zombied out watching the thing. I think that's what Minecraft does. It completely, yeah, completely zombies out. And the parents are hate them because they have to hear that stupid song in the background. Yeah. Anyway, what else is but going on? So talking about Ashley Madison, I, I found this story fascinating. And again, this is one of those things where I don't think people are thinking it through to the logical conclusion. 
So we talked about it last week where the Ashley Madison folks were bragging about how many people have signed up for their site since the hack. Well, and one of the stats they threw out there this week was that 90,000, at least 90,000 of those accounts were women. Now, now, are they verified or is it like the crap from before? Well, let yeah. them finish the story. But, but so There's here's more. the thing. I, I, okay, my theory is that those 90,000 women are women that don't know how to go to the dark net sites to go search to see if their husband's on it. But they can handle going to AshleyMadison.com, signing up for a free account, and doing a radius search to see if their hubby pops up in the list. I want to say it's 90%. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think people are thinking that one through very well. Or, you know, oh, I want to have an affair. No, I don't think it works like that. Yeah, but wasn't the, there a story about the number of women on there that were bots? Oh, uh, an astronomical number, yes, yes. absolutely. Like 0.1% were actually well, so real the, people. Uh, we talked about this last week. I mean, that's the funny thing to me is that so Ashley Madison's basically gone into a huge defensive mode, not because of the hack anymore, but now they're spending more time issuing press releases and doing like PR damage control about the number of women on their site. So that's why I said, I mean, it was, it was a, you know, a big release from them that 90,000 women had signed up on the site since the breach. And I'm like, yeah, no, here's my theory on that one, and I'm pretty sure this is what it is. Trust me. Well, yeah. The woman sits at home going, I want to have an affair. She shows up at the Blackfin and says hi. She doesn't need yeah. to sign up at a damn website, right? Let's, let's all be honest with each other. But, yeah, it's, it's – um, he should – I wonder if – he can't sell the damn thing yet, right? It's too volatile. He's already made his money. What, I mean, what's he worried about now? Well, yeah, they made over a million dollars from not deleting people's accounts last year, so right. why not? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Craziness. So, you know, one of our favorite topics is always Uber. Um, Uber is doing Uber cool things, uh, but not here. They have the Mad Max mobiles uh, out in Chicago. They have the Stormtrooper mobiles out in New York City. They dropped the ball with, in Detroit with the Woodward Dream Cruise. Yeah. So for muscle cars or RoboCop. That, that, that should have been the launch of Unter. Right. Un- exactly. I think I, I'm still going to do that. I don't care. <laughs> what, what kind of car did RoboCop drive? That was a Ford Taurus. Oh, yeah, you couldn't do that. No, Uber. nobody likes Ford Tauruses. No. Drive a Dodge Stratus. But the Mad Max cars, did you see those pictures, Billy? I have not. They got these giant Mad Max cars that like are driven by Uber drivers that you could like take it to the bar. It's What? Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Just Google Mad, uh, Mad Max Uber. Uh, right now. And, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I want to drive in that car. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm, uh, I'm getting Mad Maxed out. I've already seen the movie three times. And I just bought the Xbox One version of it. And it's going to, yeah, if you don't see me for, and with Star Wars Battlefront coming out, you might not see me for a few months. Um, yeah, it's good. Well, and, and we'll talk a little bit more Star Wars in another in a future segment as, as we've got some of our guests coming in. Are you going to talk about the drone? Oh, we're absolutely going to talk about Force Friday and all that fun happy you uh, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but so I, one of the things that, are, one of our favorite topics is, you know, drones and basically how technology is going to end us as a society. And so now, we, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the Google robot that went for a run through the woods. That was that scarier than everybody a go- out. That, that had the Google than a, brain. Than a ghost movie, that, uh-huh. honestly. Yeah. Now, now they've got a, an AI robot that learns and learns very quickly. And it very, in the span of, oh, about a day and a half, looked at its creators and said, you know, I think we'd all really be better off if we just kept humans in zoos. I saw that and I didn't like it. <laughs> I, well, why? Why would they? Well, you know. Well, if you think, dude, think back to iRobot. That sure. was one of the major plot points in iRobot. Sure. Was we're doing that? You know, it's for your own protection because left roaming around in the wild, humans are dangerous to each other. So we're just going to go ahead and put you in zoos, and, and life will be good, and we'll keep you safe. I, and, and think about it, zoos not a bad life. You get fed. Yeah. Lay around. A lot of, a lot of sunshine. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have a cave. People and I want a cave. Other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they, they crap out in the open. <laughs> Nobody cares. It's not a bad gig. If you think about it. But yeah, no. Seriously, it's getting like I know they make AI movies that are like scary, but that this is like that's when real I, life. When I saw that Google thing walking, I was like, <gasps> like literally shrieked up my spine. Like, oh no. Yeah. Then like you it. couple it with the artificial intelligence, <laughs> and it, dude, it gets it gets to a whole other level of freaky, creepy. Yeah, crazy but how stuff. can you take a Android seriously when his name is Dick? Oh no! I absolutely take all that stuff seriously. Oh uh, no! Yeah, Andrew no, Dick. yeah. It wasn't Richard? No. No. Oh. It was like Ex Machina. Did, have you seen that movie yet? Not yet. It was basically it's the Google thing where the, it was basically the guy that created Google, created AI, 
like robots that looked like humans, but they basically knew everything because they were tapped into Google. Like, so, I mean, they had like all the world's knowledge, and they were self-learning, so they brought a guy in from Google basically to test to see if he could play with its mind. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you feel like it's a real person. Oh, and the thing ended up, it was, it was creepy, man. Like, by the end, you're like, yeah, this isn't too far off. Yeah, no. But Blade Runner was, what, 2019? Yeah. yeah, we're, yeah. we're close. 17 or 19, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, hey, we are uh, coming up against a break. We should go ahead and drop in or drop out. Uh, let ourselves get reset, get situated, get a couple of guests floating in. Yeah, absolutely. Bye-bye. We got Corey here from, uh, from y- Yomacon going to talk about yeah, what's Yomacon, going yeah. We got the guys here from the Rack Show. We got a couple other great podcast guests going to talk a lot of Star Wars. And, uh, yeah, this is the IT in the D Show, and uh, we will be right back. IT in the D, networking Detroit, one beer at a time. IT in the D.com. This show is broadcasting live from Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming and is part of the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hi, I'm Brittany Daniel from The Game, and you're listening to IT in the D Show. Do you know what your storage costs? We do, and that's why we're doing something about it. At Quantum, we think you're just paying too much, period. We've been helping our customers protect their data since 1981 while reducing their total cost of ownership, often by as much as 40%. We believe your strategic data protection plan should take advantage of all available technology. Let's talk some more at 586-745-4DXI. That's 586-745-4394. Quantum. Established name. New ideas. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. Segment two, episode 108. This is the special Labor Day edition of the IT in the D show. We're broadcasting to you live in the Blackfin Ameripub here in Royal Oak, Michigan during the Arts, Beats, and Eats Festival. This is Bob, the sales guy, here with Dave the Geek. Billy uh, is covering for Nuri, who is in the Philippines on an AST. I think Billy's taking off to go listen to Salt and Peppa. They're uh, they're out live on the main stage. I'm now. sad that I'm not <laughs> seeing Salt and Peppa. <laughs> Find us online, itmd.com. Like us on the Facebook. Follow us on the Twitter slash itmd because we are itmd and you still just still aren't are not. So hey, th- this segment is uh, brought to you by uh, by Braintree Payments. So we've talked about them a couple of times now, and they're actually a, a very cool little thing. I know Nuri's been playing around with it. I started playing around with it. Um, if you're working on a mobile app and you're searching for the right payment API, check out its Braintree payments, their V.0 SDK. Um, one simple integration, and literally it is. I mean, it's drag and drop a few lines of code into your application. It walks you through if you don't have a merchant account. It walks you through if you don't have a merchant account. It'll put you through a merchant account. Um, what kind of payments do you want to process? What do you want to take? Uh, do you want to accept Bitcoin? Do you want to accept PayPal? Do you want to accept, you know, credit card payments? It's all it all does it all for you, nice and quick and easy. Um, best part is they have a live, knowledgeable staff that's there to help you. They can actually do the entire integration for you, or just walk you through it over the phone if you're having some issues. And then the really cool part is that if you go to BraintreePayments.com slash IT, they're going to give you your first $50,000 in transactions through your app absolutely free. Not a bad deal. That's, that's a lot of quick little payments put together. No, I'm, uh, I- I'm digging the uh, response we've gotten so, so far, and, and I think they're on a... Uh I'm not in an island by themselves. There's no one else doing this. Yeah, no, and uh, the Detroit Labs folks last week were kind of curious about it, interested in it, so we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, so, I mean, it's BraintreePayments.com slash IT. Your first $50,000 in transactions, absolutely fee-free. Uh, go ahead and check it out. Give them a look. Cool. Thanks for the support. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, well, hey, coming back, uh, we've got uh, the folks from Yomacon here with us. Uh, we had you guys in studio last year. Uh, talking about you know what was going on, we did uh, and then we did the other show, Midwest Media Expo. And from what we understand, this one is about ten times bigger, about ten times as insane. Uh, so we're kind of looking forward to hearing a little. It's Halloween weekend, so I mean, what? Tell me a little bit about it, Morgan. Well, of course, Yomacon itself is a giant festival of Japanese animation, video games, role playing, and pop culture. Uh, what we're offering up here is a literally a four day nonstop event. Everything starts on Thursday night and goes continuous 24 hours until Sunday evening. 
and everything that we offer on Thursday night, we offer. So free brought to, the to you by Red Bull and cocaine, or <laughs> <laughs> actually uh, brought to you in part by Fago. Ah, nice, good local tie, very very cool. Well, and so like, and it is. I mean, and so you know, and, and having gone to Midwest and having checked out the stuff about Yomacon, so it's. It is anime, so I mean, it's, it is because we get asked, like, hey, you know, we see you guys did Midwest, you're doing Yomacon. How is that different from, say, a Motor City Comic Con, a Detroit Fanfare, uh, your con here that I took a look at? Well, the big difference, of course, is that we offer, you know, it's like several days worth of programming on top of, I mean, perfect example is we're more than just a dealer's room for the most part. What you're looking at here is dynamic programming. We have discussion panels, game shows. We have live concerts, dances. We have 24-hour video screenings. We have audience participation events. We also have 24-hour tabletop gaming room, which we've actually just expanded to from 8,000 to 33,000 square feet. And a video game room, which goes again twenty four hours. Now, when you and say they're all ta- Jap- and they're all Japanese games too. When we went in there last time, I was like, oh, it's more than just Japanese games too. Well, that's, just, that's what I was gonna say. Like when you say tabletop gaming, like what what is that? I mean, Yahtzee, uh, like, Risk. Yeah, we're talking board games, card games, role playing games, everything under the sun like that. We're talking Cards Against Humanity. We're talking Settlers of Catan. We're talking Japanese board games. We have one of the biggest of. Uh, tabletop gaming collections like our gaming library has over 400 titles and anyone with a badge can go over and check out any of these games and now actually we've just moved them over to Kobo Hall they've been over at the Renaissance Center because we're split over both venues but the great thing is is that we've been able to do something that uh, no other convention has been able to pull off and no thing else over in Detroit either and that is we have Kobo 24 hours for our event that's nice, insane, yeah. So, and again, ten times bigger than Midwest. And and now I'm not gonna lie, Midwest was a little overwhelming for our little dipper dip our toe in the water uh, with you guys. So, it, you know, if you're going to multiple venues, you know, if it's across multiple venues, like how do you how do you keep it tied together? I mean, like you know, I, I know, like I stopped going to Comdex when it became not just the convention show floor. It was. Oh, well, all the really cool stuff is off in the hotels, and you've got to get the invites to the vendor parties and all that stuff. So, I mean, is it? So, I mean, it's it, like, a, how, like, how are you keeping all that sprawl from keeping people from getting to what they want to get to? Well, the great thing is that we actually have a very diverse, you know, amount of programming. We have certain things that are dedicated at one venue or the other. Perfect example is we have our video game room, which offers PCs, consoles, and arcade, you know, games on free play the entire weekend long over at the Renaissance Center, along with our concerts and a lot of our bigger game shows, whereas we also have most of our guest programming at Kobo, along with some of our video screening, and again with our tabletop gaming room, which are also offering up tournaments, uh, like card games for Magic the Gathering and a lot of other big, you know, games throughout the entire weekend. Okay. That was my first experience when I, when I, before I even knew what Yomacon was. Um, I think we stayed at the Renaissance Center for a weekend, you know, and all of a sudden I see like 837,000 Pikachus walking down Jefferson. I'm like, (laughs) what in the world is going on? So this is a question I have. When you go to Motor City Comic Con, there's always like the cliche, like everyone's Harley Quinn and Deadpool and Wolverine, right? Is there, what's the, what's the one costume that people way over abuse? Well, it's like, it always comes about with what's the newest se- you know, show to hit this season. Sure. Previous year, we've just had Attack on Titan, which is the biggest property right now. We've had Sword Art Online. But we still also see giant resurgences of stuff from like old school things like Dragon Ball Z or Sailor Moon. But it's just the biggest gambit of everything. It's, like, it's just beyond imagination. It really I, is. It, it's, and that's one of the things I noticed even in Midwest is that I don't care what you can think of there's someone there as that character. It, 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 it just stunned me. I mean, yeah, there was the you know, the typical, you know, Harley Quinns and, you know, the guy, there were 8,000 Deadpools. Um, but, I mean, there was a lot of niche stuff that was, I mean, it was just really cool to see people walking around. Now, one of the other cool things is that this year we're actually really upping the game for our costume contest as well. 
the past we've always offered up you know it's like usually passes to the next year or it's like and also like a trophy that's bigger than you are right but this year we're actually Wait, now like bigger than bob or like oh, yes. b- bigger than the ring girl because there's a difference oh no <laughs> bigger than bob here by a i eat shot. sandwiches bigger than the ring girl <laughs> but the great thing is that this year we're actually offering up cash prizes nice and it's not like at these little like Halloween things at a bar where they're offering up a thousand dollars, but it's actually a gift package to like some you know timeshare. Right. No, this is we're actually doing real cash prizes this time nice. around. For, and it's not just for the big one; it's also for the winners of the top categories. Well, so I don't think they need cash prizes. I think they need for the people with the really large costumes, uh, like a better place for them to go to the bathroom because it's really just mind-boggling. That's right. just handicaps. Yeah, that's that's always Bob's question is as we walk around at those is, is how do you poop. He, he literally stopped people as we were walking around going, I just have to ask, how do you go to the bathroom in those things? <laughs> Even like the Hawkman guy, like you gotta, you're going to the beer and all and you're going to tickle other guys' uh, 12, noses. Yeah, 12 foot wingspan, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, uh, for example, actually, like my brother actually does costuming as well now. He just started this last year and he goes as Master Chief from Halo. Okay. It's his full armor setup, and for the life of me, I couldn't tell you how he does it either. Right. Well, so, and that's actually, I mean, that's a good follow up question there. So it is Halloween weekend. Yes. Is that a positive? Is that a negative? Oh. Do you catch flack about that? Oh. Is it no? It's really it's a great tie in. It lets people like really you know it's like it gives them that extra excuse to dress up as their favorite characters. And again, just the skill level of the costumes you're seeing here, it's unlike anything else. I mean, you'll see the occasional like costume from like. Halloween USA, but a lot of these things are actually like made by hand. And oh, the it, amount of money that some of these people have—I mean, it's—it's it's, that's their whole year. Oh that's yeah, the, I mean, the, the, I, we talked to a few people, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, I've spent like fifteen hundred dollars, you know, on on this so far." On, and it's well, wait, so far? Well, <laughs> Yomacon itself is this is you know their big vacation. We are their Disneyland. Uh, we are their Universal Studios. This is their vacation, and. The amazing thing is, this is all happening again in Detroit. Right. And we've been promoting this thing. We've been dispelling for years on end that Detroit is not that scary place that everyone believes it is. Uh, One of the big focuses we've always had is promoting tourism in. And actually, anywhere between 75 and 80% of our attendees are actually from all out of the region. Now, so, and you did mention for years, something like, how many years is this for Yomacon? This is going to be year 11 for us now. Okay. We just had our big, you know, it's like 10-year anniversary, and we brought in over 18, you know, thousand people to the event here. This was, it's like, one of the big things is that we're out there promoting all the time, constantly. This never ends, and we don't just do word of mouth and advertising. We actually go physically all across the country to let people know about this. And it's really paid off. We have an amazing staff behind us. We have an amazing, you know, city and venue to work with here. And it's like, it's like my staff is ready to take on just about anything here. Well, yeah, see, and that's like, you know, we were kind of joking earlier in the opening segment. Like, we go nuts putting on an event that has almost a thousand people. I mean, that's that's about our capacity for dealing with. Like, so I mean, how many how many folks do you have? Working on Yomacon, you know, for an event that I mean, well, I guess it's so. How many people are you expecting, and then and then how many folks do you have behind the scenes working on this kind of stuff? Oh, we actually have several hundred staffers actually on board, and we have over thirteen different departments that are all specialized for their own area. And what's great is that everybody knows their job; they know exactly what to do. And what's the better part about it is, is that they're all fans and they're all doing this for the community. Nice, and so it, uh, are ahead. we wearing? Are we wearing the Tauntaun outfits this year? I kind of want to do the three storms. I'm not going to lie. Oh. Do you know where to get those? <laughs> I, I've actually Five. found them. I, I went looking. Oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. What is that? So the main, so the main venue is is the you know the Rensen, the Detroit like Marriott, the Rensen and Kobo. Yep. And what's great is that I mean also. Just you know, we'll eventually expand out through the rest of the city as the event grows. We still have, I'd just like to say we have plenty of space at Kobo, but we're actually using more than half of it now. Nice. We're using just about everything except for the Macomb and Detroit halls. We're using literally everything else that they have right now. Well, that front, that new front ballroom is really, really nice. Yeah, the grand ballroom yeah. itself is amazing. And if you haven't been down there yet to see the rest of them, they've actually refinished. Um, everything along the uh, riverfront now too so you have two new floors of you know just 
gorgeous, you know, meeting space that they've, you know, done now. The renovations have been stunning, and now they almost have the Jumbotron and everything, you know, up and running. It's just amazing. That and the food court has made things right. really accessible, which is, it's really funny because we actually bring in more revenue to the city than Super Bowl did. Nice. That's insane. Well, the Super Bowl was a whole lot of fake storefronts, so that's not really that oh, hard to disbelieve. So bad. <laughs> now, of course, one of the other big you know draws we have, aside from we also have a hundred thousand square foot uh, dealers' rooms, dealers right. and artists, and just the biggest spread of you know it's like anything you've come across here, and it's also a juried room, which is nice because you don't see like five of the same thing all there. Right. We actually. It's like parcel things out so that way you have an actual selection to work from. Okay. We only allow so many of any type of merchandise into the hall because we want to make sure that we're giving the biggest. Well, yeah, you, you know, don't spread. need 37 people selling the exact same Doctor Who shirt. Exactly. You, you just don't. Yeah, we only allow a handful <laughs> of vendors in. We actually even have a limit on even the people that can sell wigs or right. figures. But aside from that, one of the other big draws that we have for the convention itself are our guests. And the big thing that really sets us apart from the Comic-Cons, as an example, is none of our guests charge for their autograph. See, that's a huge, huge thing. I mean, that's, that's, that's the biggest part of my budget at Comic-Cons. <laughs> it's like, no, you bring like 300 bucks just to like, it's getting nuts, too. It used to be $20 bills. Now it's like, guys want 60 80 you know, just for, for oh. nothing. Yeah. yeah, it's like, we've seen that, you know, before, and I've been to plenty of these shows before, and you've just spent, you know, X amount of dollars to come in, and you're there to meet, you know, someone that is larger than life for you. This is, you know, a person is someone you've idolized, and you go to talk to them, and the only thing they say to you is, that'll be 60 bucks. And honestly... Andrew McCarthy. <laughs> but it's hey, a- Andrew, Andrew McCarthy's pretty much dead to us. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. It was, uh, that was, that was our heartbreak at one of the other events. He was, you know, let's be honest, nobody cares about him but us. Uh, you know, I, I want to talk pretty in pink. I, I well, but I want to talk pretty in pink. I, I want to talk, you know, th- that kind of stuff. I don't really care about the two episodes of Law and Order SVU that you were on in '98. Nobody does. No, nobody, nobody does at all. Uh, which that's why I love, like in the intro. I don't know if you guys were listening, but uh, John Schneider from the Dukes of Hazard uh, mm-hmm. was outstanding. Like, you know, we walked up to him and said, hey, you know, we, one of the things we love to do is we get drops from people for our show. And he's like, oh, well, what do you want me to say? And we're like, oh, you know, hey, this is, you know, Bo Duke. And you listen to Bob and Dave, a couple of good old boys, you know, from Dukes of Hazard. And he's like, man, why does everybody only care about the Dukes of Hazard? And he turns and he points at his poster. He says, you see all this other crap that I've done over the years? And we were like, yeah, John, nobody's here for the new stuff. Just play the classics. So, you know, we gave him the recorder and he starts recording and he says, hey, this is John Schneider from, and he turns around and reads his entire banner of every show that he's been on. And he was like, oh, yeah, and the Dukes of Hazard. We'll get that in. <laughs> so, yeah, great guy. <laughs> but no, that's, that's very, very cool. So, I, okay, so then how does that work with when they're on the floor? I mean, is it just madness and chaos trying oh, no, to get like, into we, lines? No, is it? Like, we have, so again, we have specialized staff just for this. Okay. And it's like we have it's like lines set up for this thing. Uh, scheduled autograph times at that too and we just process everyone through and we make sure that it's like everyone I mean the big thing that's also a giant difference about us there is that the guests are here specifically for the fans they're not here for a paycheck they're here actually because they really care about the people that they're producing all these works for but aside, aside from all of it, like we've got voice actors. It must mean they're not famous yet. <laughs> well, no, dude, we had a great time with John St. John at, uh, at Midwest. That, that guy was phenomenal. Yeah, that had it, nothing to do with the class of tequila that he gave me. No, no. <laughs> but I said, we've got, you know, we have directors, we have voice actors, and lots of great musicians. And speaking of musicians, we actually have one of those with us. Hi. Hey, what's going on, man? Hi, I'm actually Crows from one of the bands that's yeah. performing. Oh, okay. Let's turn this up a little tad bit. Here we go. Testing, testing, what do you think? Hmm, interesting. So, uh, talk. No. Oh. Okay. But, so we've got a lot of really great uh, guests coming in this year. Uh, amongst them, we actually have, you know, aside from cast members from like Sailor Moon or Dragon Ball or Full Metal Alchemist, we actually have an interesting set coming here as well. We have Vic Mignon. Is, you know, key you know, it's like note is he was Ed Elric in Full Metal Alchemist. We yeah. also have Todd Habercorn and Chuck Huber, are also voice actors. But the other thing that you guys would like about these guys is that they're also the main cast and crew of Star Trek Continues. Really? 
Now, the really amazing thing about this is that they started this as just, you know, a fan project. It's their love for film and Star Trek. And they've actually kickstarted this, and they actually have the full on blessing from Paramount, Universal, and even the Roddenberry Estate to make these episodes. And what's really amazing is it's really built up just like the original series. Even Rod Roddenberry himself said that it's like watching this, like, you know, my dad would be proud of this. Wow. No, I'm looking forward to it. Like, I was, uh, we were laughing with the last year when we did our, uh, our panel discussion. Um, we were next door where the steampunk concert was going on. So, of course, we had no one at ours. You know, but I was like, let's put on this amazing concert. And I go, we put, have to, you know, us sitting next to them and doing a panel on podcasting. Uh, you so. be talking about Steam Power Giraffe, which is also yeah, right. one of our returning musical guests right now. They're an amazing group out of San Diego who actually started off their careers as doing kind of like a pantomime show over at Balboa Park. And with this, you know, act that they did as this, you know, mechanical, you know, automatons, they eventually, you know, started adding music to their act. And now it's a full visual thing unlike anything you've seen. Interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm pretty sure his mic's working, so let's give this another shot. Let's try this again, shall we? Uh, Yeah, so I'm Crows. I've actually been a guest at YomCon for the past, uh, what, five, six years now? And they brought me in. I do voice acting. I work with WB. And I also have my own band. Which is Survivors of the PC that we're actually debuting our new stuff at Yomicon for our big debut because we do a lot of geeky comedy with a lot of anime and a lot of comic books and lots of cool rockish stuff. Nice. Yeah. I a lot of the guests just love performing together and like Morgan mentioned, Steam Power Giraffe, uh, Crush Forty, who's a band from Japan who's played with all of the Sonic the Hedgehog video games that have come out within the past like 10, 15 years. They're going to be performing, and it's cool because all the bands kind of end up in the same circle together. And you get these really cool acts where we start ending up trading off with each other. And it creates this really unique synergy between us all, I would say. Would you agree, Morgan? I definitely agree. So are we doing a so are we doing podcast apocalypse this year? I think so. <laughs> podcast apocalypse. Well, yeah. well, there was a, what did they do? They put it. I believe eight shows on one stage and just pushed record and said go. And it was you know nothing like uh, twelve podcast hosts, all type A personalities, trying to fight for mic time. Um, ended up being a. a Pretty solid, pretty fun event. That's how we got to meet the Rack Show guys that are hanging out with us now. He was talking into the back of the microphone. Uh, so oh, now that here we, we go. So now that, that we've got it sense. turned around, he sounds much, much uh, better now. I, <laughs> I am it's a like, smart oh. man. It's like, uh, if we do this again, we'll definitely have to have uh, John St. John join us again for this because, remember, he actually also does radio out in San Diego. Sure. Oh, true. yeah. And then I'll say I'm Bob St. Bob and Dave St. Dave and, you know... <laughs> <laughs> call him Tim St. Tim. It's hilarious. Trust me. <laughs> but remember, he gets really angry if you call him Serious Sam. <laughs> remember that, Dave? Serious Sam? Yeah. All right. Good. Right good on that note. <laughs> now, another great, you know, it's like we've got a lot of great, you know, personalities coming out. We've got a lot of people that are, you know, it's like in the video game industry as well, along with, you know, the band Crush 40 and Sawa's Fool. We also have some great uh, guests coming in, including uh, David Eddings, who is the vice president of marketing for Gearbox. He's also the voice of Claptrap in Borderlands. Okay. But we also have a few other great ones in there, including we have uh, Adrian Ho, who back in the day was the voice of Nightcrawler in X-Men, but he's also the voice of Haytham in uh, Assassin's Creed. So, okay, so I mean, that's, I guess that's the, that's the thing, is that it's not just the anime, the anime voices and the, and the anime kind of stuff. It's, it's folks that, if they're hardcore video gamers and, and they're console gamers and that kind of stuff, they'll recognize some of the folks that are showing up. Because, I mean, that was, my, that was my next question, is, okay, who's your target demographic? Because when you say anime to me, my first thought is, okay, this is going to be a, a whole thing of 18 to 23-year-old kids and Midwest was not like that, but when you say that, okay, so Yomacon's ten times bigger, who is the, the target demographic for this event? Well, said originally what we were looking at was primarily an anime convention, but as we've grown, the fandoms have grown with it, and we have just seen, it's like, we've seen so much growth here overall, and we keep seeing various fandoms coming in, and it's like, we see fans coming in from Doctor Who, we see, you know, it's like, 
Star Trek, Star Wars. I mean, anything you can really imagine geek-centric and... It's like, we want to cater to that. We are not, you know, it's like we're more than just an anime convention. We are there for, like, it's like we're there for, you know, the pop culture. We're there for nerd culture. It is. Well, and so, I mean, are you expecting, like, a, a big old influx of Star Wars this year? I mean, with the, with the new movies and, and all the, you know, Force Friday and all the marketing hype. And, I mean, let's be honest, somebody at Disney finally figured out exactly how much they paid Lucas for all that nonsense. And so they're, now, they're trying to make every dollar they can back. Um, like, I mean, is, is that an expectation there? Oh, yeah. So we're expecting a lot more in the way of, you know, it's like, cosplay from Star Wars. We're actually expecting a lot of people from the 501st to be showing as well. Nice. I think they're, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty almost everywhere at every con they but show said, up. Yeah. But we always see, it's like there's always, you know, comic book fans that are dressing up as their favorite, you know, characters. Lots of video game ones. As I said, we even have, you know, voice cast coming out from League of Legends. We also have some main uh, voice cast again from Assassin's Creed. We have the voice of Leonardo da Vinci from uh, Brotherhood. Nice. As well as Gears of War. We have one of the main characters coming in. Okay. So, I mean, it, it is pretty good and diverse. So, and, and I just want to uh, take a sec. So, we've got uh, Corey and Lucas. Uh, Lu- who, Lucas, and, uh, Lucas and Conrad. I know Lucas they're both white Conrad. guys. God, I keep doing it. Corey that. was here last time. I'm the other white guy on the show. I forgot. It's, yeah. it's the other white guy. I'm the guy Sorry. that you yelled at a lot for my <laughs> Facebook dealings just because I didn't give you a comic like I gave one to Bob. Listen, I'm sorry, Dave. You got really pissy about that. You decided to unleash on me at the end of the show. You were just boiling hey, and it's hey, finally Corey, shut up. Door. Yeah, that. So, <laughs> it's called you Jomar. So, we, we actually hung out with you guys for the first time. Yeah, at, no, at you Midwest. guys are great. And, and, and so, like I, 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 like, I wanted to see if there was any. Anything you wanted to know about Yomacon coming up? I mean, we've we've got the guy here. I want to know if they're going to do Pot Apocalypse again. Yeah, Pot Apocalypse was that pretty was, good at Midwest Media Expo. I mean, we've done. you can ask Dave and Bob; they enjoy themselves immensely. We had a great time. Yeah, yeah. We, got, we had uh, what was the other podcast that we had? Uh, we had well, we had It and the D. We had ourselves. We actually had Name Not Final with Crows and Bo as well. Uh, we had Nerd Life Productions. We also had Geek Feed. Uh, Jeff Harvey was on as well, and the Quest, which he also, he does the Quest too. Right? Yes. Which is the RPG thing? Well, yes. and so I would—I mean, I would think that's just a, another layer of geekdom that's that's on the rise with you guys. I mean, it's—I it, mean, we've found this, you know, ever since we've gone from just running our show to doing a studio, everybody and their brother want, wants to do a podcast and, and wants to have you know their voice out there and they want to try to get some kind of reach. You know, so I mean, it, it, I guess like is, is that something you? I mean, obviously you're here. Yep. Uh, you know, so you you know it's a medium that actually matters. So I mean, like, how, I guess it, go. No, it's like, well, it's like, I always love, you know, podcasting in general. I've had actually a bunch of people tell me that I should look into it because they've always said You've got that I've got the perfect face for radio. <laughs> That's our line. <laughs> That's what we, we've always got. We've had face. You got the mustache for anything you want to do in life, though, because it's pretty epic. Your facial hair is amazing, sir. Absolutely. Mad props for that. Thank you. No, so, we've been to Yomacon for, sorry. We've been to Yomacon for two years now, and it's been, yeah. you're right, it's a vacation. We were unofficially us. at the first Midwest Media Expo, and then we came back at the next Midwest Media Expo as an actual podcast. The first time, we were just there as volunteers. Yeah, And no, it was amazing. It was, it was so cool. Absolutely. And then the Yomacon last year was like, Yomacon it took over Max. Detroit. It was yeah. huge. It's ridiculous. So where do people go and find, I guess, okay, so I mean, all these different programming tracks we've talked about, all these different guests that we've talked about, all this other stuff that we've had going on, where do be? And, and I guess the important question is, is the hotel already sold out? Um, how much are admission tickets? Uh, and is there a fast pass? <laughs> uh, no, not exactly a fast pass. We do have our pre-registration available online. It's currently $55, and that Wait, covers... For the weekend? For the whole weekend. That's it. That includes everything. That includes the concerts. That includes the game room. All your panels. Everything. It's only 55 Dude, that's, and a, then it's that's like, a day and at it, some other places. And at the door, it's $60. That's it. We're out of platinum passes already. And it's like there's still that, a few was, hotels. Was that the fast pass? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's like, um, but right now we're also working with the city again because we'll also be offering up uh, weekend passes on the People Mover. Oh, that's nice. great. That's an amazing deal because I'll tell you what, we had to actually stay at Yomacon um, off site and we took the People Mover literally every day. That is an amazing so offer. I mean, is the hotel already sold out? Uh, it's like, I believe we have, may have a few rooms left, but we actually have several overflow hotels. We actually fill literally the entirety of of downtown Detroit. So I'm, I'm assuming the uh, Metro Detroit Convention and Visitors Bureau likes you. I like to think so. <laughs> but what's great is that said we have, it's like 
again, the website has everything, and that's www.youmacon.com. Okay, now, I, I have to ask, because you just spelled it out, and, and I had it beaten into my head over and over and over again. It is Yomacon. There you go. It's not it's, Yumacon. Correct. It looks like Yumacon. It's, you're you're it's, the quinoa of conferences, is, is what <laughs> I'm getting out of this. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's because it's Japanese phonetics. Ah, okay. So the U is silent. Yes. Okay. So yomacon.com, and they can find out uh, how to buy tickets, how to get tickets, all the different programming tracks, all that kind of stuff. Yep. You can even apply to run panels online as well. Ah, so that's so, open. Okay. We also have a forums. We also have a link to all of our social media there as well. Okay. It's like we have an official page on, uh, it's like Facebook, Google Plus, you know, forever still uses that. Well, I mean, there's still a few Google employees on it, so yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You might want to reach them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but it's like everything is there. Again, we're over Halloween weekend, and again, all of our programming on Thursday night is free to the public. Ah, so uh, it first hits free, kid. Nice. That's a, that's a tried and true and programming method. Also, it's like we <laughs> just want to come in and check it out uh, just for a day. We actually have individual day rates available, and there's you know. It's about, cheaper you know, than the 55 bucks, even, I'm assuming, which is still ridiculous because you're not paying from, for autographs, and I don't get it. <laughs> it's only about, you know, 30 to 40 you know, bucks per day, depending on the day you go there. Right. And uh, for the, any it's like parents out there wanting to bring their kids, uh, anyone that's 12 and under, the first child there is free with a paid adult, and then up to three additional, only $10 each. So if I shave, I can get into Yomacon for free. Absolutely. That's amazing. amazing. You might not even have to. Oh, you, you can you. be my son. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have the skin tone to be your son, buddy. Maybe you're adopted. You are a mistake. Again. I could be your godson. That's, yeah, okay, whatever. that's rude. I'm sorry. They give you that. But again. <laughs> I adopted. We have 24-hour programming. It's literally a nonstop thing. We also have great signature events you won't see anywhere else. We're actually home to uh, world's first, uh, or U.S.'s first uh, maid cafe which is a Japanese phenomenon there where we actually have people dressed up as anime maids and butlers that are there serving you desserts while you're, a, while you're meeting the guests. There was a Deadpool cafe last time, yes, if I recall oh, correctly. At Midwest BX, we, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, it's like, went with uh, Deadpool and tacos because, well, Midwest Media wasn't an anime con. Right. But we also are home to a lot of really, really cool signature events in there, including cosplay shogi, which is Japanese chess, where we actually use the cosplayers in character as the pieces, but we're also home to live action Mario Party and live action Donkey Kong. Dude, that's like my favorite scene from History of the World Part One. Pawn jumps queen. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I'm not going to lie, man. It, it sounds like it's going to be I, I, yeah, it's going to be a ton of fun. I can't wait. Like, I'm, I'm going to have to do some balancing because I have kids. They're going to want to trick-or-treat around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm fairly safe in saying, yeah, we're going to be there. Yeah, we're going to be there. <laughs> but I said, again, we also have dances. We have concerts. And just about everything's included. Now, we also are hosting a charity ball on Friday night. It's only $10 to get in, and 100% of the proceeds for that go to the charity that we choose. Okay, and I mean, like, what? I mean, is it like, it's like we black su- tie or just costume? Or? Oh, it's like, as long as it's, you know, formal in some sense, be it military uniform, uh, actual, like, suits and ties, or it's like, think prom attire even. Okay. But as long as it's formal, it's allowed. Interesting. Very cool. Uh, Dumb and Dumber Tuxes, Dave. Oh yeah, yellow, blue, absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, I know you got to go rip a stage down. I, yeah, I, I, well, I might be. I might have a little bit to stick around. <laughs> I finagled my way because I. I mean, how can I not leave you guys? It's but, just so addictive being here. Bob and Dave, I think you should go to this maid cafe. It is an experience. I'm oh, I'm looking forward you, to it. You guys got to go do it. It's, and again, it's pretty great. We've got more to offer than any conventional Halloween party or like you know haunted house. And even then, I hear that like haunted houses start at like twenty bucks a run now. Yeah. Well, I did 50. just from a from a just a sheer value for the money, and like again, again, I I can't really wrap my head around the whole. You're not paying for autographs with the guests. That that's well, and, and, and that's I don't a know, game changer. And I don't know if I'm stepping on your toes by by answering this, but from my experience, it seems like the Yomacon really cares about the people. They really care about the about I, the I fans totally and about the people that. that go there. Like that's why the convention is there in the first place, and that's why the guests are there in the first place. Like we had John C. John on our show last season at our season finale of the yeah. Rack Show. We had David um, Vincent. We had on um, Stephen Bloom, and these guys they loved interacting with the people you that forgot, were there. You forgot. Tia Ballard. I man. forgot Tia Ballard, your hopefully future My wife. wife. Yeah, <laughs> because you have a big crush on her. But yeah, the, all of these guests are there and all of these fans are there and everybody is there to have a good time and the staff are no different. 
Like, everybody is there to put on a good convention. Oh, oh everybody seemed like they just had a... Had a like, everybody was very open, very friendly. I mean, that's so Midwest was where we met uh, the person that does uh, Ruppets, uh, which has become one of the bigger conversation pieces in our studio, because we had... Apparently, when you get drunk for a weekend at a comic convention, four weeks later, uh, puppets that look like you show up at your house. Uh, so <laughs> that happened. Did no one have the talk about the birds and the bees with you? No. no, no, did, no, no. Well, now you know. Yeah. Uh, but no, so, I mean, it's... I, God, I'm, I, I am. I'm really looking for like what haven't we what haven't we hit on this? I mean, I, I know everybody's got stuff to do. So, what? oh, I was just going to say that uh, being a guest there for the past five years, and I just kept coming back because of just the friendliness of the staff and all the attendees and everything there. It makes the guests want to continually return, return, and you know, do everything they can to make Yomacon such a great experience. Like they've been giving, you know, even the guests, all the attendees. It's just. Everyone benefits from this. Cars. So basically, don't be the person that winds up being the "this is why we can't have nice things" person. Yeah, I'm, and I crows. That actually, that person myself. <laughs> but no, said. But there's just so much things that you can do throughout the entire weekend. There is more. It's like there's literally more content than you could possibly cover over the course of five events easily than you can do over the course of one weekend at Yomacon. It is just there's always something going on. Again, we've got. You know, it's like we have panels. So just set your expectations things. walking in that you're going to miss something. Kind and of again, <laughs> it's like if you're there on the gaming side of thing, we have video game tournaments and we have it's like card game tournaments. And most of these also have cash prizes involved with them as well. Outstanding. I, I, what your, what your, there is a lot of programming there. You have to sort of have to have a playlist to pick and choose what you really want to do. I'll go with mine and you have to figure out yours, okay? Okay, Conrad. fine. Okay, Divide so and my favorite things there are Nerdy Flirty. Uh, we did Nerd Speed Inning, which is the coolest thing in the world. It was a lot of fun. You, you do it totally, what's the word, anonymously. Yep. So, like, I took on the character of... Well, you did it poorly because you kept wearing your name tag there, your, your press badge. Yes. So you did it wrong. So I wasn't anonymous. But uh, Nerdy Flirty, the speed dating, it was really cool. Yep, put uh, on by Nerd Life Productions. Conrad got a lot of phone numbers. I, sh- I won. Uh, you've heard in our show... I won speed dating. I got a lot of, got a lot of nice. resumes. Yep. So... <laughs> um, Anything Tia Ballard does, because I'm a big fan of Tia Ballard. Mm-hmm. I love Tia Ballard. Um, John St. John's hilarious. Last year you had The a, king of Yomacon. Yes, last year you had a John St. John roast, which was phenomenal. That was at Midwest Media Expo. That was Midwest. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But it's still good. I'm, I'm mixing them up because I see them all the time. Yep. <laughs> um, what else do I like there? I'm You're not going to leave me yours? anything to talk Go about. Ahead, yeah, All right. right. Well, one of the things that I really, really, really enjoyed last year, oh, and actually Lucas games. and I got to sit on this, was the uh, Guests Against Humanity, where they give a bunch of people a bunch of booze, and it was hosted by Corey over here, and basically they play Cards Against Humanity on stage, but it's the audience that gets to decide who gets cards, who gets the cards, you know? It, so It is an 18 and up panel, I believe. Yes, so. it is a, a little bit adult-oriented, yep. and by a little bit, I mean it is absolutely adult. Actually, well, this year, actually, we're doing something a little bit different than, than Cards Against Humanity. What? We're we're doing a game called Super Fight, or what's going to be called Super Guest. Uh, we know all we about Super Fight. We've actually reviewed it on the Rack Show. That's nice. going to be an interesting change-up, considering now everyone's doing Cards Against Humanity mm-hmm. with the guests. It, this is now a completely different thing. We're just throwing everyone in it, and hopefully we'll see where it goes. Now, Crows, what is Super Fight? Well, Super Fight is a game. It's a card game where um, you uh, have these cards, yeah. and there are these characters on them. Really? And, Basically, the characters you match up with these attributes, which could say, you know, has super flight. Or so, like, so you could be Bambi, but you could also get a flamethrower, yes. but you could also only have two legs. That's true. As opposed and to me, who could be like Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator, but, you but could I'm be blind. And, and you only can attack by ballerina there you dances. Go. Yeah. Who would win right, that well, well, hey, guys, we're, we are bouncing up against a break. we got to stop. And, and for those who didn't pick up on it, uh, the, the guys that sat in are from the Rack Show. They are on the Podcast Detroit Network. Sundays, uh, you are currently running from 7 to 9. Yep. Um, and that seems to be a good fit for you guys. It's kind of cool. Well. There's going to be a yeah. wrestling show we're coming doing... in before you. Yeah, yeah we're live. That'll be so a good time. Nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's nice. it's nice. And so, and again, thank you, Morgan, Corey, uh, Kraus, for coming out. Uh, so, and it is Yomacon, Y O U M A C O N dot com for all the information, the advanced tickets, and all that fun stuff. Anything we miss before uh, we cut you loose? Nope. Um, all we can say is that. We can, all we can guarantee you is an amazing weekend. <laughs> That's not a bad guarantee to make. All right, well, hey, uh, this is the IT in the D show. We'll be back in just a couple minutes on the flip side of the break. IT in the D, networking Detroit, one beer at a time. IT in the D.com. This show is broadcasting live from Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming and is part of the podcast Detroit Network. 
Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hey guys, it's Ty Mog, Bruce Leroy from The Last Dragon. You're listening to the IT&D Show. Online Tech is the Midwest leader in secure, compliant, enterprise cloud and collocation hosting services. The company's network of five data centers protect mission-critical applications to ensure they are always available, secure, and comply with government and industry regulations. Backed by independent HIPAA, PCI, SOC 2, and Safe Harbor Audits, Online Tech delivers exceptional experiences for companies in need of a strategic hosting partner. For more information, call 877-740-5028, email contact us at onlinetech.com, or visit www.onlinetech.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show. Welcome back. Segment three, episode 108. This is the IT in the D Show. We are broadcasting you live from the Black Fin in the back room on Labor Day weekend during the Farts, Beats, and Eats Festival. This is Bob the Sales Guy here with Dave the Geek. That's what they get for not being one of our sponsors. Exactly. We <laughs> forever brand them as Farts, Beats, and Eats. We got uh, Billy here from Social Coop standing in for Nuri, who is in the Philippines on AST. Find us online, itinthedy.com. Give us a likes on the Facebooks and a follows on the Twitters. because uh, And, oh, we have an app now in iOS. Go figure. Yeah. Um, so Android and iOS. So find us at Podcast Detroit or IT in the D. And, well, yeah, uh, we're try- we are. We're starting to try to push people over to the Podcast Detroit stream just because as things are growing and expanding, the IT and the D stream will eventually go away. It's going to get renamed to a secondary Podcast Detroit stream. So grab yourself the Podcast Detroit app. It's out there for iOS, Android. It Yeah, it, it's smooth and it's clean and it's slick and it, it looks pretty. It's nice. <laughs> so this, uh, this segment is brought to you by... Uber, we talk about them almost ad nauseum probably every episode. It's about time they jumped on as a sponsor. But this isn't for using them as a service. This is for driving for them. Um, if you want to make some side money, if you are a stay-at-home mom, if you're retired, if you are unemployed, there's you're a lot a of different former reasons. pro wrestler. <laughs> right. But the, uh, Uber is looking for drivers. And if, you know, we saw one of our friends, Mike McMahon, he did what, 60? I saw he did 64 runs and he made like 750 bucks in a week and got direct deposit on Monday. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, he loves posting his screenshots. He absolutely does. It's outstanding. Yeah. I mean, and really, you can do it when on your schedule. You either answer or you don't. So, really, if you got some free time and want to make a couple bucks, uh, check out Uber. If you have a car and a license, it's really all you need. Um, sign up with it's drivewithuber.com. Drive with Uber. No, so if you've got a car and a license, go ahead and put them both together. You know, put them both to work for you today and starting with some serious life-changing money. Start, sign up to drive with Uber. Visit drivewithuber.com. That's drive with Uber. It's U-B-E-R.com. Drivewithuber.com. Dot com, dot, dot not com. Dot co. No slash IT. No. No, no coupon code. No cu- coupon no. codes. No, just drivewithuber.com. So does it have to be a four-door? Because I want to sign up with my Cadillac. I would have a blast. Apparently, well, that would still be too old. Apparently, they did relax the requirements where your car, I believe, can be up to 10 years old now. Um, and I, I do think they are still looking for four car, for like for four door passenger cars, though. But it's amazing the level of service just as using Uber, like oh, yeah, you which know, we constantly do. You got phone chargers in the back, a bottle of water, mints. Yeah. I mean, taxi cabs. You're lucky if you can get a hi. How are you? Especially in Vegas. You know what the hustle is in Vegas now with the cabs. The guy says uh, five bucks. I take the freeway. And I go, just give me to my hotel. So like everywhere you like you have two different ways to go either down the Las Vegas Boulevard or on the highway. Highways faster. Okay. Right? Highways not fast. Well, it's a scam. It's a scam. There are the, the, so there's a trap, right? So I'm like, just get me there. Like so, literally, there, there was no two fee, uh, fares were the same. It was the worst experience ever. Yeah, no. Last time I was in Vegas, I took an a uh, I took a. Uh, taxi and the guy tried to go the complete opposite direction of where I was going. I could see the Bellagio, which is my destination. And he turned, it was like west of me, he turned east. And I'm like, why are we going in the complete opposite direction? And he was like, oh, I, you know, if I stayed at that light, it would have cost you like an extra like five bucks. But you know, there's a yeah. turnaround up here. So when I caught him, he had to turn around and go directly back to the Bellagio. He didn't think I knew what was happening. Right. But yeah, you don't get that with Uber. 
Isn't this the same driver that took you to like a... a that is a story that will happen off mic. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. Wait, so obviously we still have the guys with the rack show sitting in with us, and we also are joined uh, by some folks from the Undercard Show. We've got Brad Snyder, a.k.a. Kid Vegas, uh, who does the Undercard Show on Tuesday nights on Podcast Detroit. And like we said, we were kind of... Keeping it a little bit fast and loose here with this episode, we wanted to get yeah, we wanted to get some of the shows on to talk about what they've got going on, what they do, and 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 kind of bridge our listeners to some of the other shows that are out there. So, Brad, what is the undercard? First off, uh, thank you for letting us uh, f- uh, follow up with uh, Yomacon. That's like Devo being the headliner and Bruce Springsteen opening. That's tough, dude. That's <laughs> tough to follow. Uh, we're an MMA boxing show. We keep it loose. We, uh, we're a national show, but we also cover amateurs. Uh, Ring Girl Liz has been with us for almost a year. Uh, we're getting there. And, that's you know, what we, we like, just that's have what like about you, Brad, is you just don't just show up, you bring ring girls. Well, what you know? happened was it was a TV <laughs> show to begin with, and then when we thought it was going to be a radio show after we had done the TV thing, like we found out that everybody's favorite part was the ring girls so it was like it's not really going to work in radio but at the same time it's like not having the food coloring with kool-aid so like we had to have them <laughs> but it didn't make sense so people are like it doesn't make sense but i was like if it works ever... for the episode photos yes exactly <laughs> you know uh so we we couldn't get rid of what everybody's favorite thing was so it uh you know it's still everybody's favorite thing obviously ring uh girl liz over here looks amazing well but it's like, worked out i mean we wound up you know using you guys and, and bringing ring girls in for XICW events and some of the other stuff we've had going on. Not a bad relationship to have. Yeah, no, I got a picture great. with Ring Girl Liz, and I'm going to like your Facebook page and send you messages all the time. So you got a fan out of me. <laughs> can we get Ring Girls for our show? Yeah, I, I will. Can you? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think Jomar will look terrible in a Ring Girl outfit. So I got to think no. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, yeah, we're happy to be here. Uh, Podcast Detroit has been definitely the the best five weeks of broadcasting uh, internet radio that we've had, and you guys have been nothing but the best to post. Getting, getting to meet the rest of the shows, I think, is absolutely awesome. We're sitting next to two of these here, but there's a, a few people that I've not met on the network, so this is great. Well, yeah, we're, you know, that's one of the things we've decided we want to do is we want to, like, every couple months, we want to do another one of those open house events, you know, downstairs at Activate, and, you know, and throw that open and... You know, get get some booze in everybody, and just you know, a little cross pollination never hurts. Because I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you know, you don't necessarily think about it, but I, I like at, at at first blush, you look at all of the shows that we have on the network already, and we do. We've got you know, hand combat radio, MMA, boxing, that sort of stuff. We've got you know, Gridiron now that's talking Lions football and sports. We've got you know, the Rack Show that's you know, geek culture at its quote unquote best. I believe is how it's put. Um, you know, we've got Get Your Geek On. We've got some of the you know, so there, it's it's kind of a weird, you know, we got music shows like Mayhem Radio. I mean, it's, it's you know, heavy metal. That, uh, I mean, it, at first blush, it doesn't look like it fits. But when you look at everything as a whole, it's really, it's a solid group of guests and it's a solid group of shows that puts together a, a kind of unique level of formatting. And then and that's the nice thing is with the podcast format, it's not terrestrial radio. It doesn't really matter that, you know, you guys are on, you know, Tuesday nights at 7 to 9 followed by a, uh, you know, a, a health counselor relationship kind of show, you know, from 9 to 11, you know, because, well, it's the internet. People listen when they want to listen. There's no such thing as appointment viewing or appointment listening anymore. So, you know, it's, it's all about the syndication and getting it out there for more listeners. And that's, that's kind of the cool thing to me is watching that, watching people starting to make that transition as we've started to do this. Is people are like, yeah, you know, live listeners, they are what they are, and that's cool. Let's start embedding the SoundCloud feed everywhere. Let's start, you know, getting out on iTunes and every place else. That's that's where I think you know that's that's the nice part of what we do. And the the great thing about it is the rest of the shows on the network are the shows I would listen to anyways if I wasn't doing what I was doing. People don't realize that boxing and MMA was my only job for like four years, and that's how I made a living. And but I love the geek culture. Uh, no offense, I'm calling you guys geeks. I'm calling oh, you no, out. It's all but my cards. I'm good. He's right. a geek. I'm the geek of my show. He's the nerd on the show. Bob's there too. But I, I was watching uh, <laughs> The Dark Knight today. You know, that's one of my favorite movies. Like I love that culture. So it, you know, it, it's a good fit 
you know, even though we don't seem like a good fit Tuesday, love the rest of it. Well, yeah, that's like uh, directly after us on the Rack Show, we have the Art of Relationships radio show. So you go from, like, geek culture at its best, no quotations, Dave, to... Uh, <laughs> it's quotations still. Well, we're, we're, wait, we're, we put we're them back? Trying, we're trying to earn our non-quotations. I thought that we had already earned that, personally. I, I earned mine. Maybe you got some work to do. Uh, but then the, we go the, into... The profile uh, photo I got had quotes around best. <laughs> but then we go to a show that's about, you know, relationships, sex, and, and everything that has to do with making your, your oh, and he work goes, with your partner. Yeah, he goes into wow, detail. Wow, he goes deep. No I, pun intended. I really want to be on that show. <laughs> We're actually having him on our show either, uh, it might be tomorrow or uh, the following Tuesday. He reached out to us, and that's the great thing about Podcast Detroit so far. And uh, our co-host Jimmy, I'm calling him out right now, is having uh, looking for love in all the wrong places, if I may use that. And he's going to come in and Flip try to... Over. <laughs> Can you, can you call that episode for the Sorry. love of MMA? I was like sure. That? Yeah, that'd be a good title uh, for that episode. We, well, even we, had, we tried the dating game, and 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 yeah, that that was what it was. And then I have I've been reading his blog because uh, he posts those, and he's uh, yeah, he, he's he's got some challenges. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to have the relationship uh, doctor on, and uh, you know that's you know we cover MMA and boxing, but. On slower weeks, we also cover pop culture. We talk a lot of movies. We love Star Wars. We we love uh, everything else everybody else talks well, about. Well, you have to have a personality with to go with the show. Away from boxing. Exactly. People think I only watch boxing. Well, I mean, that, and that's the thing. I mean, it's, you know, and, and that's what, what you wind up getting, what you should wind up getting from a show is not just, you know, a host sitting there droning on and on and on about you about one thing. You should get to know them. You know, and that's and that's one of the things that I think is really kind of cool is we've got a there's a lot of really good, solid, big personalities that we've got running shows right now, and I mean, and that's that's where it that's how you pull people in. Like, I mean, that's because you know we're we're geeks. If we and we did, we tried, we tried the hardcore geek shows, we tried the hardcore IT shows, we tried all that stuff. It 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 didn't work for us. It didn't resonate with the listeners. Once we just kind of like threw our hands up in the air and said, "Screw it, it's bowling night. We're going to sit here and drink for a couple hours and talk about whatever we want to talk about with our guests." That's when things started to go right. And I mean, and that's because that's what people are looking for, right? And uh, you know, when we were looking for mentors, even though you guys are like unnamed mentors, uh, you know, are you going to follow across the bot- uh, battlefield where the tracks? in halfway where the soldier didn't make it across to us it seemed like you were able to uh, accomplish stuff that we wanted to do you were very close to your audience it's something that we've always wanted to do I, I've seen it at your networking events and stuff like that and so like you know like I said we, we, we observe from far and we love everything you guys do well and it's and we're also I mean we're the first ones that say just because just because it worked for us doesn't mean that it's for everybody I mean right. you know it's like you know the Motown I mean the Motown Mojo guys that were here before us you know, they run one break a show. I mean, that's that's kind of where they're happy now is, you know, they run for about 50, 55 minutes, take everything. And then us, we need, a, like, a good 25 <laughs> minutes and then a reset. You know, clear your brain, grab a smoke, grab another drink, whatever. Just just a reset. And whereas the Rack Show takes, like, two breaks every uh, 40... We take three breaks every 40 minutes or something like that. <laughs> yes, two I know. Breaks, I, I know. I know. I, I know. My hand, you maybe mess up I know. I've show. edited your show. Yeah, I know. thank you. <laughs> Actually, I gotta cut out of here. I gotta go because I'm here actually to work. And you are I'm not working not, anymore. Not here at Black Fit. Actually, getting into yeah, yeah, I have to go turn on the stage for the radio station, putting on farts, beats, and eats because I don't care about their sponsorship. Either. <laughs> They're making yeah. me work on Labor Day. See? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming out, man. Yeah, no problem. Finally, he's great gone. Meeting the undercar guys. Great meeting you guys. Yeah. Always. So, Brad, on topic, Bye, who's this tomato can uh, Mayweather's fighting? I never heard of him. Oh, uh, Berto. Uh, yeah, no, no. I mean, I know him, obviously. Right. Uh, everybody's talking on ESPN that uh, there's no interest in the fight. Uh, he's definitely earned any way he wants to go out, but it clearly won't get the attention that it deserves. Well, it's going to be, you know, I wanted to make a T-shirt for, you know, j- jab, hug, jab, repeat, you know, win. You know, pretty much that's a, that's your Mayweather fight these days. It's true, but like I was talking to these guys out there, you know, he's within the rules and he's found a way to win, and he's made more money than my probably whole branch of family will win uh, make over a lifetime. So you have to admire him for that. 
at the same time, is he entertaining? No, but it, I'm trying to think of a technical wrestler because I know you're a wrestler guy well, that maybe isn't hockey. entertaining. Go back but. to hockey. I mean, you know, so you had you know the Russian Five that played you know the wide open run and gun, and then they got shut down by the New Jersey Devils with the trap defense. Right, but it worked. And everybody whined about the trap defense that oh, it slowed the game down, and oh, it was boring. Yeah, but they won, and that was the point. Perfect it's, example, Tim Duncan. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's, is he a superstar? Yes, but is he a superstar? Could yeah. it just be that he's a jerk? I mean, he's a bad guy. <laughs> That's how I see it. It's not, I mean, if, if it was a good guy that was, like, amazingly, like, technically amazing, I, I would root for him. But you don't really want to root for Meriwether because he seems like such a jerk. I, I like Mayweather personally, and I've talked to him one-on-one. I've, I've interviewed him. Uh, I like him personally. you got to remember... Uh, He's selling fights. He's a good guy. Uh, but his persona that he puts out there just doesn't seem like it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, I, what's, what's his logo? It's money. Oh, the money team. The money team. I mean, I don't know. But we'd I, all it's, it's want that root. money. We'd all yeah, want, but there's you know. no humbleness behind him. There's no... But, at the same time, the stuff we all hate, Kim Kardashian, everything we yeah, absolutely sure we hate, hate he's found a way to make he's, money so off So you're saying that. he's the Kim, Kim Kardashian of boxing? I wouldn't say yeah, that. That's what you're saying. I'm saying that we you like celebrity. You could Mayweather inside of her butt. Just, I'm just want to point that out. Yeah, absolutely. He'd like it there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, R- Ring Girl Liz, really quick, and I'll just call her Liz from now on because now that's what we call her on our show. But uh, is Mayweather good looking? He is, right? I think he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got some other stuff going on. No, no, I, I agree. He's just like, he's just a bad guy. But it's see, hard to root for the bad guy, that's all. It's kind of like... A, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No? Well, you're, you're a wrestling fan, so yeah. <laughs> no, I like, love the... Uh, everywhere. Really? Oh, yeah. No, just, it's all... Say goodnight to the bad guy. I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm also a Manny fan, so I should probably just say it. Okay, I love Manny, too. I'm, but, yeah. You cool. see, Bob, in the same situation, if I may give an example, is like, I think wrestling only happens three times a year. I think it's SummerSlam, WrestleMania, and then, like, another pay-per-view event I catch. So, like, to somebody that doesn't follow boxing, mm-hmm. they think only Mayweather is boxing you know and he comes and he goes and stuff like that but Bob probably has watched Monday Night Raw and other stuff and I miss all that so when Mayweather comes around it's it's the attention on the boxing world but what has happened is the boxing world has kept going and well, Mayweather's see, a small part yeah and I, I'm, I'm more I was more when the heavyweight division faltered that's when I stopped watching boxing right you know and and boxing needed to do what MMA does and put some of their shows on free TV Spike, ESPN, I don't care where. But the way it used to be, you used to only be able to watch boxing on Channel 7, Wide World of Sports, right? And the boxing stopped doing that when Don King started. Everything was, had to be a pay-per-view. Yeah. Well, give me something. Give me a taste. Let me, fight, let, me, let me root for some underdog guys, right? Bring some guys up. Well, and even if it's different levels. I mean, you know, so you've got, you know, Ring of Honor and TNA that are both on, you know, free cable. Well, not free, but cable TV now. Yeah. You know, on some of the open stations. And, yeah, you know, WWE has their own you know, network and all that kind of stuff you can grab. But, I mean, so you've still at least got access to some of that same level of talent out there. So how do we find you, other than podcastdetroit.com, how do we find the undercard? Facebook.com uh, backslash radio undercard is the best way to do it. And, um, you know, we have pictures of the ring girls up there. Besides that, we also cover and comment on what's going on. And then we do gambling picks, too. And uh, if you are gambling, which is not legal in Michigan, gamble you can responsibly. Gamble la, la, la. responsibly. <laughs> yeah, don't lose more than you can. The owners of Podcast Detroit are not responsible for it. Exactly. <laughs> the views I had, and opinions expressed by. <laughs> I had one good year where I picked at 97%, and like that's my like claim to fame. So. And you then, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, you can't keep picking at that rate. I mean, there was a lot of luck. Yeah, the in that, law of averages of will eventually right. catch up with you we, unless you have insider information. We, yeah, <laughs> we make more money than you know. You lose money, but I mean, that's not really. I, I, I take it into stride, and the people that follow that. I hope have enough money to gamble. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, Brad, Liz, appreciate you guys coming out. Look forward oh, yeah. to well, uh, and, and hang out. Shows. We're not kicking you out, but we, we want to get back on normal time with us. So we're just going to take another quick break, uh, and then we'll we'll dive back in. Force Friday. Yeah, yeah, this I'll is let you I- talk to Liz. This is the IT and the D show, and uh, we'll be right back. T in the D. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. IT in the D dot com. This show is broadcasting live from Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming and as part of the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hello, everybody. It's Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are listening to IT in the D. Hello. 
This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. Segment four, episode 108. This is the IT in the D show. and We are broadcasting to you live from the Blackfin Ameripub in Royal Oak, Michigan during the Farts, Beats, and Eats Festival. Yeah, I, know, I know the breaks keep saying that we're at the Detroit Sound Studios, but we're not tonight. We're, we're out live. It's all right. We're, t- we're <laughs> testing this whole, like, let's, let's do a live broadcast. Okay. okay. This is Bob, the sales guy, always here with Dave, the geek. Uh, Nuri, the FNG, is on his AST, so Billy from Social Coop is sitting in for him. Find us online, itmd.com. And uh, just a quick reminder, don't forget our pink slip party, our biannual uh, monster job fair at the Majestic is coming September 17th, 5 o'clock until question mark. If you are... Uh, and it's the job fair that doesn't suck, let's be clear. Uh, right. It does, there, we took all the, We tried to do our best to take all the suck out of it. Open mingle format, no Primerica guys, uh, no multi-level marketing, just people looking for IT folks. And music and, and booze. And, and properties and music. And a couple surprises, and we um, actually uh, we're, we're in talks with the Blue Cross Blue Shield. They're hiring up, I think, two hundred guys. They're insourcing. Good news for local economy. Good news for the IT industry. Yep. And um, looking forward to uh, the, the wacky mayhem. And then at five thirty, when we're like, you know, we panic until five thirty, and then it's full, and then we breathe. Right. It's like every single, uh, you know. <laughs> but so while I'm flying home from Vegas, I took the red eye. And, you know, I bought the, uh, wild, the GoGo in-flight wireless. Right. And I'm reading all the Facebooks of all the people that stood in line at Toys R Us. And we're mad. For the Force Friday and stuff. And we're mad. Because all the stuff was gone. Or never made the shelves in some cases. Or never made the shelves. So what did Bob do? I go, I, I, first off, I spoke about myself in the third person. But then I, I, <laughs> I came home, took a nap, and then went to my local Meyer. And, and everything was there. And all the things were everywhere. They're still there. And all the uh, all the remote control droids are gone from the mire that I was at. There were, uh, there were seven of them when I was there that afternoon. They're all gone now. Well, I bought the last two. One for me, one for you. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't bring it because where are you going to put it? Yeah. Um, I'm having fun with it. It's um, it patrols like a Roomba. It learns the room. Oh, that's us. Even though that son of a bitch went down the steps, <laughs> I figured he would know. <laughs> So he's not that smart. Um, so it, it survived the steps? It survived the steps. It's got some weight to it. It's about the size of a baseball. Um, the baby can't comprehend it. It's, 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 it's one of those... It's in, now, I, I, there's no baby in our house, but we have dogs. Right. All so, the dogs uh, are going nuts. <laughs> um, supposedly there's two of them. One of them that speaks and the other one that doesn't. Yeah. Um, mine doesn't. Which is fine. The dumbest thing they have on it is you can record like a video of yourself, like for a hologram. Yeah. And then you look at it from your phone, and then it plays the hologram. Like it doesn't play it in the room; it plays it on your phone. Oh, so I can't like record, go the f to sleep on this thing, and then send it into no. my kids' room and play it. You can't do. You can't. Oh. You can't use it unless you're on your phone. And it's drive patrol and hologram. There's really. I mean, it's cool. I'm happy I bought it. But I don't, you know. And I'm not gonna lie. There's that that seems insanely cool, and I want the quadcopter Millennium Falcon. That looks not not the sol- not the single blade. No, four. I, I want the quadcopter Millennium Falcon. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to have that. They're um they're making it really hard for me not to spend my money. Well, that's like I said. Like I'm trying so hard to not like I'm trying to remember all of the painful lessons learned from Episode One, where there was all that excitement and all that hype, and dude, I was like a kid on Christmas Eve. And then and then Jar Jar, and then and then you discover that all he the best. Jar Jar? Yeah, exactly. All the best parts of the movie were in the trailer. Um, Did and, they announce Benicio del Toro is going to be in? I mean, uh, it's going to be like it's going to be Episode Seven, the Attack of the Cameo. Right. It, it, absolutely. But so like they're making it really hard for me to maintain that detachment because there's so much cool shit. I mean, like I, I, I got, I gotta have the droid. I got, I gotta have the little Falcon thing. I got, I wasn't as like I don't understand. Like, I don't understand all the little like die cast figures and the the, the die cast. No, stuff. I didn't buy any. They got some killer Lego sets that are out. I mean, they've got you know some that are like the the new Star Destroyer that's umpteen bajillion pieces and is 180 bucks. That is um, Gretchen was like Lego master of the universe. Yeah. Built all of them. Star Destroyers stumped her. I got it for her for her birthday. Yeah. 
And I'm like, where's the Star Destroyer at? It doesn't build it. I go, no more Lego until that's put together. And she's like, but it, but it. I go, no, but it, nothing. So, I mean, we went to, we loaded up. On, we got so much crap. Um, it was like, I felt guilty father. I'm gone all week. I'm in Vegas. My poor, you know, they were probably happy their father wasn't home. So I'm like, let's go shopping. I'm like, whatever. Like Yoda hat, Typical dad shirts. 101. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm not going to go, what am I going to do? Buy my kids a sous vide, a shot glass, and a... You know, so those shot, yeah, beer mug from Hard Rock. Right. Yeah, no. So here's a chip from the Bellagio. You know, <laughs> enjoy. What is this, Dad? But I, I am um, again. I think you know it didn't fall as flat as uh, that um, Amazon Prime Day. No, no, nothing. Um, nothing is going to suck as hard as Amazon Prime did for a long, long time. Did I'm you see sure. the creepy like three foot action figures? Oh, four. Some of them. The Vader and the Chewbacca are four feet tall. What am I, what are you supposed to do with that? Um, scare people. Is right. that, like, I'm, like, you just like leave it in the corner, in a dark corner of your house, and wait for people to stumble upon it. Carpool lane. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah no, it's, it's, it's a midget. Right, exactly. Yeah, you got a midget and a Darth little, Vader no, outfit. little person, yeah, little person. I got, I got a little person in a stormtrooper outfit. What are, you, what are you trying to say, cop? Right. <laughs> Take a picture of me? Um... But I'm, uh, I was, I felt like, so, like, I, I, I did the line to Gretchen, and I, I went easy, and I go, I will take you shopping for Star Wars toys, like my father That's before me. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at me, she's like, she's just, like, shakes her head, like, you're such an idiot. Like, I know. I don't that's, know what do you... that's, what, that, yeah, that's how it's supposed to work as a parent. But see, I got the, my thing was when I was a kid, and I know how you amassed your Star Wars, your, your figures. Oh, yeah. Mine was my mom says, hey, we're going to Kmart, and I go, one figure. I ain't going crappy shopping with you unless you get a f- action figure. <laughs> you know, and my kids haven't learned this yet, thank God, but that's how I amassed my Star Wars collection. And I always got like six of them for a birthday Christmas, you know. But like, I took them shopping. Like, after Star Wars, I go, I took them to go get Mad Max at GameStop, didn't let them buy crap. Then I took them to the liquor store to load up for the party on Sunday. I'm like, I'm just laughing. I'm like, worst father ever. I'm like, no, you can't buy any games. I'm buying Mad Max. Like, <laughs> 40 of grown man for crying out loud. Do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. So actually, and Billy, there's a, there's a good tie-in. I mean, because there's been a huge social media push with, with all of the stuff that's going on. I mean, whether it's, I mean, you've got Target fighting with Walmart, fighting with Amazon, fighting with the main Star Wars channel, fighting with, I mean, all these different outlets are trying to be the Star Wars place to go. How, do, how does a, a social coup counsel someone in that scene because I mean you have I mean you have clients that are in business with competitors like like how how do you like look at a strategy from that perspective yeah to in, in those situations we I think about the uh, do you remember recently where Burger King put out the press release where they said that they uh, between them and McDonald's oh yeah the world press yeah, yeah the world yeah, yeah, yeah. day right and so they get a lot of great press behind it and McDonald's was just kind of like meh they just yeah didn't take advantage of Oh, shot it down. Right, so th- that's a well, great example. Well, McDonald's right? came across looking like dicks because right. the press release that the McDonald's had released was basically, yeah, no, we're good. Um, if you really want to help world peace, instead of issuing stupid press releases, Burger King, why don't you actually do something real, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you're a jerk, McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. But, you know, that's a, that's a creative uh, way. That's a great example of, of how you can sort of stand out from, yeah. from the crowd by by doing, you know, it, it, it's exactly what it was. It was a marketing stunt, but it got a lot of great press for Burger King. And, you know, you look at uh, Amazon, and Amazon is so bizarre to me. I don't understand how, you know, you look at the Millennium Falcon, which retails for 109 bucks, mm-hmm. which they're selling for 88 Yeah. I don't understand their strategy there, right? Uh, unless they're hoping that everyone's just going to buy more stuff. But, yeah, with their profit margins, I just don't want to say that. Well, I mean, you're assuming they're buying a, 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 just a ton of sure. them to load up their warehouses, and so they probably get a decent deal on them. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I would assume, and I, I know I saw a study at some point in time, maybe about yeah, four or five months ago, where it is very rare for someone to go on Amazon and buy one thing, one and done. You know, it, especially, when they, especially, I think it was, they said, in the, in the context of, like, a month. Like a, a typical Amazon shopper will buy at least if they if they if they buy once they'll buy again in that same month. Exactly. Yeah, uh, I was just left thinking about uh, there was a, a thing going on in social media with uh, the Star Wars social media team, which is phenomenal. 
someone made a complaint about the armor on one of the characters who's supposed to be a oh, the female stormtrooper. Yeah, yep. stormtrooper. And so it just, I love that, that they didn't even think twice about their response. Like, it's armor. Yeah. Right. Why do you, why are you criticizing that it looks like armor? armor. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't do a molded D cup breastplate for you. Because that's realistic. Right. That's, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, those, those are the, that's what you'll see at Yomakon. Yeah, in, in a month or so. Oh, the thing that, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they'll, they'll have the mold. I mean, that's a, they have the female stormtroopers. I've seen them there. But yeah, no, not very effective armor. Looks great. Right. But not really effective as armor and not really what you'd see, say, in a military setting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but you guys are doing well in social media wise, huh? We don't understand how or why. Yeah. Now, you, you know. You just us. put the things out and you're yeah. like, oh, people liked it. How did that happen? Exactly. Why does the stupid meme get, you know, 8,000 clicks and engagements and yet, hey, free classes and free CCNA training gets like eight? No, cause here's the thing I don't get. We went from like 100 likes on Facebook to like 8,000 and it stayed there. Like uh-huh. forever. And like 13, all of a and sudden it, we woke it, it comes and goes. Yeah. Yeah. We woke up one morning, we have 13,000 Twitter followers and it never has changed. For as many times as we've mentioned, follow us on the Twitters. Like on the show, we get we get drops in ads though. Like so, I mean, like that's the thing that's like you know paying attention to the engagement stats and all that stuff. Like it's it stayed constant, but there are people that come and go. Because then they realize we're idiots, and <laughs> then they go. And then, yeah, then the new people show up. They don't know how dumb we are. Right, right, the, yeah. And they right. don't spend enough time with you to know that they need to unfollow <laughs> you immediately. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, Lucas, I mean, did, did you make it out for Force Friday at all? I mean, did you no, Force I was up north. Oh, that's right. You were camping. I was in the woods. They don't sell Star Wars up north, apparently. No. No, I was, I was up at Houghton Lake in the middle of the woods. We went hiking, so. I love Force That's what yeah, I was yeah, going for. There's Friday. always a Walmart in the middle of the There was actually a Walmart in Houghton Lake, and we went to it <laughs> it's like Saturday. Roaches. No, we got up there late, so I don't know. It's... Oh, the Walmart's up north. Have you ever been to those? They're like it's like going to Gibraltar Trade Center, man. It's like it's it's, it's everything. Oh, it's just a it's a, a it's craziness and just it's merchandise like crap. People watching one one. Oh my god, it's, that's the best part. It's like <laughs> what? Uh, near, 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 near. Oh yeah. I was like when I told Gretchen to go shopping, she had her pajamas on. I go put some normal clothes on. And she goes, well, you can do that. At, I've seen people do that at Walmart. I go, yeah, no, we're not those people. <laughs> not, yeah, not like, this family. Right, no. exactly. Well, and so, and I, I feel we like put I on our pants. Yeah, no, so yeah, Bob uh, dragged me last weekend. Uh, we stopped in at Falling Down, you know, had a couple beers. We were there yakking about, you know, business plans and that kind of stuff over beer because that's the only way we can talk about anything. And uh, Bob dragged me to the flea market next door. Oh, which in, war- in war- the 10 Mile and Quinder. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting experience. And, and Dave being like, I don't like it, I don't like it, then he gets there and you, I had to drag him out. Well, I wanted to, dude, I, well, you can't bring me into a place like that and expect me to leave anytime soon. Did you like, find anything good? Uh, I did find uh, one trophy uh, that will find its way into our friends' houses at some point in time. Uh, it is the official, uh, it's, it's a nice little gold plaque and a dude standing up and it's an official Minuteman. And so, oh, nice. so my new my new goal is I have to get so I think that's going to be the, the new game among friends. Like the game, the goal is to get that into your friend's house, displayed somewhere where it should be seen, but they don't notice it right away. I like that oh, game. That's great. And then it's and then it's your job as the recipient once you figure out you have it to pass it along. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of like putting dead fish in the heat returns, right? right. Uh-huh. <laughs> You've never done that before, have you? No. So yeah, but no, there, there was that. Uh, there, there was uh, probably, I, I'm, I'm convinced it was the world's largest collection of uh, VHS tapes uh, was there. Um, every kind of tool, uh, broken or not, that you would need uh, is there. Uh, there was a tattoo parlor. Uh, inside in one of the stands. Wait, it's like a tattoo wait, parlor at, at a flea, flea market? market? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I'm not... I, I'm pretty sure I might have needed it. Like, I might need Solid to get my head. judgment there. Yeah. That would make yeah. sense with all those Hazel Park tattoos. No, there's a... The, the one at Dixieland I always go to, there's a there's a, a Mexican barber shop. A Mexican there's barber a shop. Xbox 360 repair clinic, <laughs> which, you know, it must be, like, lined around the building to get into there. The best one is there's there's church... 
Wait a second. Like a church? Yeah, there's like, like four the there's like four tables. Because all of a sudden we're walking and I go, there's a there was like an open bowl of crackers. <laughs> it's in the middle of the table with like pamphlets. So I go, I want to eat one of those crackers. Like what do you how do you obtain like, those? Is, is that their communion wafer? Yeah, they, is no, that, no, they're Ritz. Is that the Jesus? Yeah, they, they, yeah, they couldn't afford to go to the Christian store. They have to go buy Ritz. Oh like, Bob. Bob, did, they, Bob. did they offer you so wine at least? Speaking of VHS, <laughs> we, were, uh, we went to Georgia uh, a few weeks ago, and we are just hanging out with my aunt, and uh, I'm like, oh, like I want to watch a movie. I'm like, what do you guys have? And like just rows and rows of VHS, and I'm like, Star Wars. So I put it in, but it's at the end, right? And so, so I you have, have to, to press rewind, and then I'm looking at my watch, and I'm like... 20 minutes later right we start and remember when that was normal life right yeah and yeah. then you have to use the tracking uh huh because it's all fun you didn't have the 1957 Chevy rewinder ne- on, the, on the fireplace mantle like I everyone else did I pull a pencil out right <laughs> <laughs> no no now I'm talking He's about saves right yeah. there there well that was the whole thing go, go to Blockbuster you gotta rewind the tape where you could find five bucks what a racket Blockbuster was Please be kind rewind they didn't have the movie you wanted. You always ended up having to rent like Stroke or Ace. Yeah. <laughs> Everything was gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> but hey, we're going to wrap things up. We are at the end of episode 108. We'd like to thank the Blackfin for hosting us here in the, in the back room. They're playing, it's been a good night. They're playing Jump Around now. The dance floor is probably packed out here. Um, it's, it comes to a close of this episode and also to Farts, Beats, and Eats. Um, look forward to uh, next year. Don't forget, mark your calendar September 17th, our Pink Slip Party, and uh, we'll see you next week. Well, we did have, so, I mean, we had the Rack Show guys, you know, that were here, that are on What's Sundays. Up? We had the Undercard Show that's on Tuesday nights. You know, check out Podcast Detroit, you know, for the full lineup of shows that we have. Uh, we do have shows running Sunday through Thursday. Friday is a day off. We have Saturday shows starting up this week. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of crazy. We've got a whole roster and, and lineup now. It's, it's a little bit insane. Good. So that's all at podcastdetroit.com. And, yeah, we did have Yomacon here. Uh, so that was yomacon.com. And, Billy, how do we find more about social media? We should have uh, Yomacon in the Yomacon in the Huma room. Bob's going to make me shush him again, I think. No. Can I go? Yes. Can I say the words? Uh, socialcoopmedia.com, socialcoopmedia on Twitters and the Facebooks, as Bob likes to say. And that's all. Two O's in coop. coop. Two O's. Because well, it's, co- it's, it's co-op. So like not. Two O's. Co-op is a hyphen. Okay. All right. All right. And Thanks for hanging out. Drink up your drinks. Get your phone numbers. Good. You don't got to go home. You just got to get the hell out of here. Be good. See you soon. Be good. Kids. Beat it. The emergency destruct system is now activated. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women. Long live Vlad! You've saved your life. Have a nice day. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Make the run. The run. The run. Game over, man. Game over. It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off! I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so... Well, especially with the back doors open. Yo! Hold up! Time out! Time out! Y'all take a chill! You need to cool that shit out! And that's the double truth, Ruth. Bob loves it in the camp. I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. That's why I like it in a can. Joe owns the trees. Owns. 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 Bear me. <laughs> My job is to make sure this program is morally upright and cultural and wholesome. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Why would, like, Buick put their cars next to, like, the Bentleys? Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, I can't take that position. That yeah. analogy sucks because it's right. Because you're getting your 8-track tuned up. <laughs> Are we at a break yet? No! Yeah, so now I'm just, like, doing, like, stupid stuff to make me laugh. 
Venture capital is not the end game. When are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. It's my show. I can say what I want. Yeah. Kiss my ass. <laughs> go home. <laughs> unplug. <laughs> get off the goddamn internet. You are everything that is wrong with the internet right now. <laughs> so white right now. I, I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. <laughs> show now. I love this city. I was banging oh, on the way. Wrong. Really? Should we talk about the tag team? <laughs> should I keep going or should I stop? Can I just say, it's been great being on a show that talks about Mickey Rooney dying for 20 seconds and then poop for 10 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show.